Come on, come on, come on. Push yourself. Let's go. Let's get rolling. Let's get rolling. Let's go. Stiff arm, good. Right there. Strip it out, good. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights continue to hunt every day with an eye on the future. The players learning valuable lessons and implementing them on the gridiron. The team now heads into the heart of their schedule. Big Ten play. There's a renewed hunger to achieve under the bright lights of college football's most storied conference. Let's get the show cracking. On this week's episode of Our Football with Chris Ash, we take an inside look at graduate transfer student Jonathan Hilleman. I just love the game. I just love the passion. Uh, I, love, I love everything about it. Just teamwork is pretty much a microcosm of life. It's a team game. We sit down with the coach and look back at some of the best plays from last week's ball game. And you like these guys that you're working with. You've said that a number of times. You believe in your group. Yeah, absolutely. We've got great chemistry. Um, we've got uh, great work ethic. Uh, these guys really care about being the best that they can be. And if you've got that, then that's a start. We tag along with senior captain Giovanni Rochino and get a glimpse of his impressive internship in the Big Apple. For me, I'm someone who hasn't had a job ever. He's always been football, football, football my whole life. So to have this opportunity and to have prior knowledge because of life beyond the game, I think it gave me an advantage in terms of how I communicate. Plus, we preview this upcoming game against Indiana in the friendly confines of highpoint.com stadium. It still boils down to hard work, and it's a process, isn't it? It is. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been on great teams. I've been on teams that have struggled. And, and the, the one common theme is just got to keep working the process. And a hard work never goes away, and it never stops. And you just got to keep going. It's all just ahead on this week's edition of Our Football with Chris Ash. Make them throw it there. The ball will take you there. You've got to play the curl. Go again. Hopefully you've got your mind right. You've made a choice on what type of player you want to be today. You decide the passion, the energy, the level of execution, the physical and mental toughness you display, it is your choice. Today is a test of our character. It's a test of our culture. Some of you have been around here a long time. A lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, man. You make the choice how good you want to be. I want it for you. The only way we get that done is you go really hard. Every day, I don't care how many games you win, how many, you stay humble, you stay hungry, you keep getting better every day. Okay, that's what really good players do and good teams do. How about those nuts? What's up, y'all? I'm Jonathan Hilleman. I'm a running back. I'm a fifth-year senior. I'm from Plainfield, New Jersey. It is a good short yardage back. If he gets the call on third down, has the first down. How about a touchdown? Yes! Football was always a part of my family. Football, my, my father played in high school. My brothers have played um, college level. Um, I have uncles that played. I have godfathers, god cousins who've played in the NFL. So football's always been a, a part of my family and a part of my life, and it's just something that I kind of latched on to from a really, really early age. I just love the game. I just love the passion. Uh, I, love, I love everything about it. Just teamwork is pretty much a microcosm of life. It's a team game. It's, a, it's definitely a family atmosphere here. I mean, that's big for a guy like me because I'm a family guy. That's one of the biggest reasons why I came back home, to be closer to family. And it's definitely a family atmosphere here. I mean, it, from the first day I've been here, guys kind of welcomed me in with open arms. I wasn't looked at as a fifth year transfer, the, the outsider. I was kind of brought in pretty early, you know, to the brotherhood. And guys kind of accepted me and kind of knew that I, I was a about the right stuff, and I'm just here to win, just like everybody else. Journey, the journey was it had some ups and downs, man. At first, it started out really well. It's all conference as a freshman, freshman All American. You know, got injured sophomore year. You know, had to battle through some things, coaching changes, and stuff like that. But you know, finished.
finished out fairly strong, graduated, and I came back home for, you know, for my final year of college ball and just really trying to make it as special as I can for the team, for myself, and for everybody involved. It means everything to my family. It means you know, being close to home and being able to you know, watch me play and being involved in the whole process. I mean, I talked to my mom the other day about it. I mean, she, for home games, she used to have to drive four hours. Now she only has to drive four exits. And it, it's an awesome feeling for them to be so close and me to just be able to hang out with them. Because I'm a mama's boy at heart, so I mean, I, I mean, being close to my mom is always a big thing, as well as my dad. My dad is one of my best friends. So just being, you know, around my family and being able to, for them to see me play and see me play at my best is, is always a great thing. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck, along with the coach. Welcome to Our Football with Chris Ash. Chris, after the ball game against Buffalo, you said, I love our guys. I appreciate the second half. Can you build off that performance in the second half against the Bulls? Well, we hope to. Um, again, I, I really do love this team. They're a lot of fun to, to be around. The week of preparation has been really good. Uh, somehow we have to uh, play better on game day. We've got to coach better on game day. Last Saturday against uh, Buffalo in the second half, they could have quit. They didn't. They came out. Uh, and there were opportunities in that second half where we could have turned that into a real ball game. You allowed only 69 yards in the second half and only seven points. Were you hoping to get the same kind of effort in the first half? Well, that's what we wanted. That's how we wanted to start the game. And th there were opportunities to do that. We just made a few mistakes. Uh, guys weren't in the right spots uh, or we missed a tackle here or there. And uh, we got to get that cleaned up. Uh, because I still believe we're way better than what the scores have indicated. You pointed out it was mental errors and penalties that are killing the team. How do you try to cut down on that stuff? Well, we got to evaluate the calls. You know, are the calls too complicated? Are we asking them to do too much from a mental error standpoint? The penalties, you could just be locked in. It's discipline. There's got to be some accountability for the penalties that we're having. It still boils down to hard work and it's a process, isn't it? It is. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been on great teams. I've been on teams that have struggled. And, and uh, the one common theme is just got to keep working the process. And uh, hard work never uh, goes away, and it never stops, and you just got to keep going. You did have a really nice drive, third quarter bridging the fourth quarter. It was quick, six plays, 70 yards. The drive started with a pass to Shameen Jones out of Cardinal Hayes in the Bronx. Do you like what you see from this young man? Absolutely. He's got a bright future here. He just works every single day, he loves ball. Uh, he's learning the offense. He's learning how to play receiver. I'm very excited about what he's trying to do and what he's going to do in the future. Second play, you give the ball to Blackshear. He gets seven yards. He gets a first down. Do you like his durability? Do you like his toughness? Yeah, Blackshear is not the biggest guy on the roster, but I'll tell you what, he's one of the most competitive. And he's tough as nails for his size. And, uh, we just can't get the ball to him enough because good things are going to happen when he touches the football. Then Rochino finds Jerome Washington for 25 yards. Last year, he led the team in receptions. He's a Mackey Award watch list guy. Does he want to have the ball in his hands more this year? Yeah, well, he, he's, he's going to. And you want to put it in his hands. Absolutely. Against Kansas, he probably played his best game of the year, and then he, he followed it up against Buffalo and uh, built off of that. So he has to continue to improve. He's on the right path, and I really like what he's doing right now. Blackshear gets four yards in the next play, and then Jonathan Hilleman picks up 12 yards. You said last week you'd love to get all three backs in the mix, and there's an example of someone other than Blackshear who's contributing in a nice way. Yeah, absolutely. Hilleman is just Mr. Steady, um, does his job, does it quietly. As the Scarlet Knights are building on a drive, first and 10, deep in Buffalo territory. Around the edge, walking in. Touchdown, Raheem Blackshear. 
And then Raheem Blackshear goes to the end zone on a 14-yard touchdown run. I thought he picked his spots nicely. He did. He was very patient. He, he saw an opening. He hit it, accelerated, and then got into the end zone. It's a much-needed touchdown. There. Jackson to throw. Deep shot to the sideline looking for Jones. And that ball is intercepted. Picked off by Damon Hayes. Now you've got some momentum, and then Damon Hayes comes up with an interception. What are you thinking? Uh, just a huge, huge play for Damon in a critical situation to give our offense positive field position. You know, right there at that moment, and with the, the score and how much time is left, if we could go score again, we feel really good about this being a ball game. And then on the next drive, you get Eddie Lewis, another youngster, into the act on a 24-yard pass play, a freshman who also shows some potential. Yeah, Eddie just keeps getting better also. Him and Shameen Jones are uh, kind of like uh, two peas in a pod. They're young. They both have talent. Uh, they're learning the offense. They're learning how to play uh, receiver, and they're getting better every single week. The drive stalled there. Are you saying, oh, I'd like to have that back? Well, yeah, we didn't get points on the board. That's what we wanted. We needed a touchdown, not a field goal. So we had to go for it on fourth down. We got sacked on that fourth down play. But uh, getting a lot of young players out there playing, getting a lot of experience, and they're getting better. How do you continue to improve to stop other teams from making big plays? Because defensively, that has been a problem this year. Yeah, the, the explosive plays are a real concern. And uh, we cannot continue to give those up if we're going to have a chance to be in ball games, have a chance to win. It's about being in the right spot and being able to make the play when you're in the right spot. And it just takes you know, more practice time, more reps, and more confidence as well. I'm impressed with Gio Rochino. He comes off the bench and he's always ready to go. And again, he gave you a nice lift in the second half. He did, he, he sparked our offense and it just it seemed to have a little more energy and juice uh, out there when he was uh, at quarterback. And uh, that's just what he does. He's kind of a spark plug and, and he's always on the alert. He's always ready. Doesn't get a lot of reps at practice when we go team, but he's getting mental reps and he's always uh, on top of what he needs to know. Did you just need a change in your mind at quarterback position? Yeah, uh, you know, Coach McNulty and I had talked about it and, it wasn't that Art did anything wrong because Art had completed some passes, had done some good things, uh, but we still weren't going anywhere. We weren't getting the yards. We weren't getting a, a positive field position, and we just felt like we needed a change. I know your attention to detail. I know your preparation. So when you see things go well during the week and then execution isn't what you want on a Saturday, how tough is that to handle? Well, it's tough for all of us, tough for the players uh, because sometimes they have no answer either. Um, you know, because they, they felt confident, they felt good about a call, about a situation, formations, whatever uh, it is. And when they don't get it right on game day, they have questions also. So it's something that we got to continue to work through. Myself, I, I got to find a better way to coach. Got to find a, way, a better way to lead the team and um, lead the staff and get our preparation to show up on game day. You called somebody out after the game. It's unlike you. You called out yourself. Yeah. And I think that it starts with you, but you were quick to take some of the blame here. Well, I'll, I'll take it all. I mean, I'm the, I'm the head coach. I'm the one in charge. And uh, when things don't go well on game day, it's, it's my fault. I've got to look at everything from uh, the preparation of the coaches and the players, our practice, uh, what we're doing uh, on game day itself leading up to, uh, to the game. It starts with me, and uh, I've got to lead better, I've got to coach better, and I've got to help everybody else get better. This is called the team room, and the essence of team really comes to the fore in a situation like this where you're not achieving what you'd like to be. We're in a situation that nobody wanted to be in, uh, coaches and players alike, the whole team. But we'll fight through it, we'll, we'll get better, and we'll, we'll come out on the other end uh, in a lot better situation. Most takeaways occur, most guys get them on defense because you run to the ball. When you don't run to the ball, I promise you, very few opportunities for takeaways are going to occur. Ten strong on three. One, two, three. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. And you like these guys that you're working with. You've said that a number of times. You believe in your group. Yeah, absolutely. We've got great chemistry. Um, we've got uh, great work ethic. Uh, these guys really care about being the best that they can be. And if you've got that, then that's a start. When we come back at our football, much more coming up with Chris Ash. Plus, we'll look ahead to next week's ball game. Don't go away.
every success story is achieved on the football field on Saturdays. And that's why Coach Ash has established the highly respected life skilled program entitled Life Beyond the Game. Internships are another valuable tool, and fifth year senior Gio Rachino has taken advantage of one such opportunity. The quarterback and team captain knows that today's experiences can shape tomorrow's accomplishments. So I work Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I lift at 6 a.m. Uh, we get done with lift about 8, get home around 8.45, get dressed, get changed, head right to the train station. And then it takes about, usually getting here around 10.30, and then I get right to work. Um, I work until about 5.30, 6 o'clock, and then I get on the train, come home by like 7.30. So pretty long days, but it's worth it, worth the experience. I help at Shack Source, so it's the website that the company uses the, for their employees for training, um, so pretty much stuff like that. I help uh, do project builds, I help just things of that nature, um, so just kind of helping them in terms of what they need with the employees and anyone else that needs help. There's been a couple uh, Rutgers people that I've met, which is pretty cool to see. Um, obviously, the, you know, an extension of Rutgers, that they've always, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty cool to see that. So uh, being, seeing people that um, are from the university really is really, really pretty cool. Rutgers has helped me tremendously. Uh, just uh, be able to have those opportunities that we have with life beyond the game. I never thought about life beyond this room. Wasn't a thought of mine. Why? I'm doing what you guys are doing. It set me up to be able to communicate and to be able to understand how maybe the workplace works because for me, I'm someone who hasn't had a job ever. It's always been football, football, football my whole life. So to have this opportunity and to have prior knowledge because of life beyond the game, I think it gave me an advantage in terms of how I communicate and um, how I just understand how maybe the workplace works. So I think that really helped me. I think the work ethic and just how you carry yourself really translates well to the workplace. That's something that I can see. Uh, days are long, and there's a lot of time maybe that you don't want to come into work today, but you have to go to work, and I'm fortunate to have this opportunity. This segment of the show is sponsored by RWJ Barnabas Health. Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Rooks, Chief Medical Officer, RWJ Barnabas Health, Sports Medicine at Rutgers. And I'm here to talk to you about health tip number one. Um, fall is coming, and fall means the weather's going to change a little bit. And as you're out there exercising, remember to dress in layers. And so as you sweat, you can take layers off or put layers on. We don't want you to overheat because you can still suffer from heat illness, although the fall weather is coming. Our play of the game is sponsored by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. This week, instead of one play, we've got two plays, both interceptions. Let's start with one by Isaiah Wharton. Yeah, it was early in the game. Uh, he was on the backside of a three-by-one set. They had him isolated one-on-one. -on -one. The uh, Buffalo did a little RPO, is uh, what they're called uh, right now, and the receiver ran a slant. Uh, Isaiah was in good position. The guy didn't cleanly catch it. It was tipped, and uh, Isaiah came up with the interception. Great play. We really needed it at that moment and they're really happy for him. The Damon Hayes interception we've talked about in the show, he made a play that gave you another opportunity offensively. Good individual play there. Oh, absolutely. It was a huge, huge third down play, and uh, it was at a critical moment in the game. Um, we just scored, and uh, we needed to get the ball back and, and be able to score again, and he came up with a huge third down interception. They, they tried to isolate him one-on-one. -on -one. We were in man coverage, 
He uh, was in great position, leaned back, picked off the ball, and gave the, our offense the ball in positive field position. For Damon, that's the third interception of his career, and he plays at a high level a lot. He, he does. He, he continues to get better and better. You know, it's a young man that moved over from corner to safety. Uh, he's been playing nickel for us also, and that's what he was uh, playing when he got the interception. Uh, he's a real competitor. He's really working hard to study the game and, and improve his uh, game, and I like where he's at right now. Nothing like interceptions, Chris. It gives your offense a chance. Well, it gives us all a spark uh, as well. It changes the momentum of the game, changes the field position. Uh, it does a lot for you. This game preview is sponsored by HighPoint.com. HighPoint.com Stadium, noon on BTN. This Saturday, Rutgers taking on Indiana. And, Coach, the focus now goes back to conference games. Absolutely. The Big Ten's a great league. Indiana's a good football team. There's been a lot of competitive games between Rutgers and Indiana, and we're going to have to play our best game. All right, Peyton Ramsey's their quarterback, and he's a good one, capable of doing a lot of things. Yeah, they're, they're throwing the ball extremely well here uh, right now. Uh, they passed for a lot of yards against Michigan State uh, last week. But uh, we're going to have to play our best in the secondary, and we're going to have to be able to put some pressure on quarterback and Steve Scott has raced for almost 400 yards in the year so you've got to worry about the rushing attack yeah he's a young man that we're uh, very familiar with we recruited him uh, pretty hard and uh, we knew he was going to be a really good player and uh, he has been for them so far these are dimes go if it's inside turn and high point it right if it's inside turn and frame it go open up square up go get high point go Finish, counter, counter, finish! There you go. So back to you for this weekend. What's your focus in terms of trying to get the things going that you want to be established? Yeah, we just got to keep focus on ourselves and keep trying to improve. I mean, there's, that's it. I mean, we got to go out and practice. We got to practice better. We got to execute better. Got to make sure we put together a plan that our players feel confident in that they can go out and execute uh, cleanly on Saturday. But it's so hard to transfer what is done in the laboratory to the classroom. How do you get guys to believe in that? Well, that's what you, you get called a coach for. You know, we, we've got to figure that out. Um, it's all in our teaching and our preparation and our language and, you know, our, our corrections and holding guys accountable. There's a lot that goes into it. It's not one thing. Uh, there's a lot that we've got to do uh, to continue to improve and get our preparation to show up on Saturday. But overall, guys, you guys look fresh. We got a lot of good work in, but the focus has to be on us and our improvement and what we do, our fundamentals. You've got so many young men in this program. Is it easy to get them to bounce back quickly, or do you still have to play a little bit of coach and psychologist at the same time? Yeah, you do, regardless of whether it's a young uh, guy or an old guy, you, you do. Losing is tough. When you've invested a lot, you've worked really hard, losing is tough. It's not only tough for the players, it's for the coaches, and, and I, as a leader, have to be able to come in and, and uh, you know be positive and respond in the right way for them to follow. Coach, good luck to you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. That's it for this edition of Our Football with Chris Ash. We'll see you next week, everybody.